this week we're going to be speed dating we're going to be speed dating our paints and what I mean by that is when you go on a date you get to know someone quite often quite slowly and it's only after a few dates that you realize that you're totally incompatible and you want different things from life well it's a bit the same with paints you use them and you get to know them and whether they behave nicely or they're a little bit pushy on the paper or whatever but you usually only discover that after they've managed to ruin a painting for you so wouldn't it be nice if you could go on a speed date when you'd get to know whether they're incompatible straight away well of course you can because most of that information is on the tube or at least readily available on the colour charts or on a website and I just want to take you through what that information means you know if something is, has PV23 written on it what does that mean and what does it matter to you well why it matters is the more you know about your materials the better you can use them and you can get them to do what you want rather than what they want. My name is Liz Chatterton, I'm a professional watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I bring you a tip or trick that I wish someone had told me about ages ago and this is all about paints, what they do and how you can find that out so that you can shortcut your learning. Let's take a look at what information the paint manufacturers give us on the tubes. And the first thing is, they all vary. First thing to look at is the name. This is irrelevant. I mean, what is sandstone? And even if something is called the same name, you might find, as we're going to see later, it's an utterly different paint. So do ignore the name. It's a vague possibility at the best. What you do need to look for is, is it artist's watercolour? or student. So Cotman is the student range from Windsor and Newton. Just here Aquafine is the student range from Dale Rowney. And what is student watercolour? Well it's still, if it's from a big manufacturer, probably very good quality but they have left out some of the good stuff and put in a few more fillers and it's cheaper. You might have a look and see that says Series F, this one says Series 1, that says Series 1. You might think, oh, what does that mean? Well, it's just the price. So the different pigments cost different amounts and therefore Series 1 will be cheaper than Series 2, that'll be cheaper than Series 3, or in this case, Series A, B, C, D, E, F etc. Let's look closely at what information we have got and um, we'll look at this Turner's um, Artist Watercolour Series F. If we turn it over, the first thing that we see at the top is PB74 and this is the number of the pigment that they've used to make this paint. P stands for pigment and in this case B stands for blue so it's pigment blue 74 it's only got one pigment in it. And we'll come back to that in a moment. It gives us the light fastness. Now that is really important because some pigments fade really quite rapidly with exposure to UV light. So you always want to be looking for a really high light fastness rating. Things like alizarin or opera rose, they are beautiful colours but they fade and you might notice within even a year of exposure that they have faded back. This also gives us um, the transparency. It's really useful to know whether your watercolour is transparent, semi-opaque or opaque. That makes a big difference when you're painting because an opaque paint will, will cover a lot more of the underlying layers, a transparent one will let them show through and we'll come back to testing this ourselves in a moment. Now this one gives us a warning and it gives us a warning because this has got cobalt in it and cobalt being heavy metal is poisonous and that's why please 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 don't lick your brush when you're painting. If paints are for sale in America 
they have a safety warning all the time. So some manufacturers use squares to show whether it's um, opaque, semi-opaque or transparent and some use circles, usually something like that. Sometimes half the circle is, is coloured in. It all means the same thing. On the whole, if you see a triangle, it's actually referring to something different and a lot of manufacturers just don't put this on. But if you see a triangle that's coloured in, it means it's staining and we'll come on to that. If it's half a triangle, it's semi-staining. Oh, sorry, I was just about to colour that in. And if it's a an uncoloured in triangle, then it's a lifting colour. Let's just look at these two. So they're both called Sat Green and I said earlier that the name is pretty irrelevant. I mean, it's a general indication. So if we look at this Lucas one, Lucas is a German brand if you haven't come across it, you'll see that it's got two pigments there, PY153 and PG7. So PY, pigment yellow, PG, pigment green. Let's have a quick look at this. So we, it's a Cotman, sap green, somewhere on here. Ah, there it is. Oh, it has PY139, PG36 and PR101. Totally different. PR red, so this actually has some red in it. We've got those three pigments versus the two pigments. Does it actually matter? Some artists say that you should only buy single pigment colours. The argument is that the more pigments you mix, the more likely you are to get a muddy colour. I have to say I think that is wrong. I can show you a tube here that's got three pigments in already and it's a beautiful colour. It's clear, it's vibrant, it's transparent and you it's a really good mixer. So you could mix that with a couple of other pigments and still get beautiful colours. You could mix two single pigments and end up with a disgusting muddy colour. The important thing is the colour temperature and what you're mixing. And if you haven't seen my film on mixing colours, please have a look at that. So it's useful to know what pigments you've got and whether it's single, double, triple, but don't, don't get too hung up on it. Let's see whether visually they are the same even if they're totally different. So this is the Cotman sap green and it's a nice fresh green. Just trying to move that around a bit. And this is the Lucas. And I would say that is a, a brighter colour. Possibly because that's got a tiny bit of the red pigment in, it's a slightly more subdued colour doesn't mean that one is better than the other. They are just different and no surprise because they're made of totally different things and yet they're both called sap green. Let's just have another look at two paints that are called the same thing, both called gamboge, there we go, Lucas gamboge and a Rembrandt gamboge. But when we look at those pigments, again, We've got a single pigment there, PY153, but on the Rembrandt, we have two pigments, whoops, the PY, so the yellow 150, and an orange, PO48. And even just squeezing them out of the, the tube, you can see they look very different, but let's just swatch them out and see what we think to the colors. So that's a very lovely, bright yellow and this one frankly looks a bit like baby poo but as soon as you add water look at the colour of that absolutely beautiful 
and definitely has more of an orangey tinge than the Lucas version. You could be really deceived by the names on the tube. If you want to find out about pigments in detail, I really recommend you go and look at Jane Blundell's um, website. I'll put the link in the description. She is the mistress of pigments and knows so much about them. The next thing I want to point out is even if paints all have the same pigment, doesn't always mean they're going to be the same colour or the same paint. I have a Sennelier Dioxazine Purple, I have a Windsor Violet, I have a Dioxazine Violet from Cotman, an Intense Violet from SAA and a Dioxazine Violet from Ken Bromley and they all have PV23 as their only pigment. So you would think that actually they would all be the same colour, wouldn't you? Let's have a little, little check on that one. So I've put out a little squidge, that's obviously the technical art term, <laughs> of each colour. And then let's swatch it out. And it's, I mean, it really is a beautiful, beautiful colour. Which is probably why I've got five tubes of it. So that was the Sennelier one, which is lovely. It's got it's honey in it. It's artist quality. We've got the very, very beautiful Winds of Violet. And then we have the Cotman one, which if you remember, I said Cotman was the student version of the Winsor and Newton. And actually that's a beautiful colour. If anything, it seems to be a little more pink. And then this is an artist quality one from the SAA. And I hope you can see that, that it's just a bit more opaque and not as vibrant as these three. And then this is the Ken Bromley one. And again, I'm trying to release some of that paint. Again, I would say that's even more opaque and not as vibrant as um, even, even less than this one. It feels cooler. So same pigment, very different colour paints. And just goes to show that you shouldn't be too sniffy about student quality paints, because in this case, I would say the Cotman is a far nicer paint, far more vibrant and transparent than either of those two, which are billed as artist quality. So all that information is all very well if it is on the tube and if your tubes are in a fit state to actually be able to read it, because of course, by the time they've been knocking about in the bottom of your um, paint box for a while, they might end up looking something like this and be totally illegible. So if you want to find out about your paints, how can you do it? You need a scrap piece of paper and put on a waterproof black line, hopefully fairly thick. Either use something like a Sharpie or some Indian ink. Have a little squidge of the colours. Let me move those out of the way. And then you can pull the colour across the line. Now this is lemon yellow and you can see that it veils that black line. So we immediately know that this is an opaque colour. The tube actually says it is semi-transparent. So I'll be interested to see how that is when it dries. The next one was that gamboge I showed you earlier. So let's pull that across see what that's like. So beautiful colour and again I hope you can see fairly evidently a lot more transparent than the lemon yellow because we haven't got that veiling of the black line. This is quinacrinone gold from Jackson's so it has this is a three pigment colour and again I'll pull that across see a lot more orange but again very transparent 
which was the whole point I was trying to say before that just because it's got lots of pigments in it doesn't mean that it's a bad colour. We'll go for Burnt Umber next and that's a Cass Art one and again I hope you can see that it's really hiding a lot of that black line. Let's see what the tube says. You see that is odd. It says it's transparent and it's absolutely not. So it's just one of those reasons why you should actually test your pigments yourself. And then there should be a clue in the name. This is called Transparent Orange. It's from the SAA. And the reason why I've put a star times three is that annoyingly the SAA is one of the companies that only puts, if I put that there, I hope you can see, they put what the pigments are, dichloro, benzyl, something, azo, red and dazazo, but they don't put the numbers on, so you would have to look it up on their website. So let's pull that colour, you know, it's a three colour pigment, pull that across. Now, you would think transparent orange would be transparent. No, nope. At the best, that is semi-transparent or semi-opaque, but that might even fall into the opaque category. Again, let's look when it actually dries. And now we can look very carefully at our black line to see whether we can see the colour over it. So we would, I would say that is pretty opaque. However, the gamboge, I can't, I, the black line shows through really nicely, as does the Quin Gold. So I will put both of those as transparent. The Burnt Umber tube, PBR7, transparent. Nah, not at all. It is opaque. And then the transparent orange, which as I say, you really would expect from the um, name. It says it's semi-transparent on the tube. Maybe semi-transparent. Shall we be kind to them? But it looks more like, I'd probably call it semi-opaque. I would say it's more towards the opaque than the transparent. So it's an easy way of testing your transparency. And you might think, well, why do I need to know that? Well, if you're doing pen and wash, Yes, you do, because you might not want your watercolour obscuring some of your, your line work. Or if you're glazing colours and you want to cover up the colour underneath, you might choose a more opaque colour rather than a transparent one. The other thing that's really important to know is their staining properties. And none of the tubes that I showed you have said whether they are staining or non-staining. But of course, you can test this yourself quite easily. All you need is a damp flat brush and just rub the dry paint and then dab away and look at what is left behind. Do that with all of them. So we've had a go at lifting all five of those and then we need to look carefully and look and see which has the most colour left behind. So for example, I can still see quite a lot of that orange, which would make that a staining colour. I can see very little of that lemon yellow, which would make it a lifting colour. I can see quite a lot of that yellow left behind with the, the gamboge. So again, I'll put that as a staining. There's some yellow left behind from the, the Quin Gold, but not as much as the, the Gamboge. So maybe I'll call that a semi-staining. And then there's quite a bit of that Burnt Umber left behind, which actually I'm surprised about. So again, I would call, call that staining. And why am I surprised? Well, usually I would expect colours with quite large, like earth colours with quite a large pigment size, not to stain, whereas man-made colours like quins, very small pigment sizes that really sink into the paper, I would expect to stain. So why is that important? Well, of course, 
correcting in watercolour is tricky at the best of times. So if you know that you've got a stain in colour, you need to be careful. And if you know that you've got a lifting colour, you can use those properties if you want to go back and adjust. Now, some colours are super staining. Let's go back to our PV23. Do exactly the same thing. Let's just choose the middle one because, well, we can. So, damp brush, pull that pigment away. You can see there's an awful lot of the purple left. If you're using very staining colours, use them with care because you are not going to get rid of them. If you're using a lifting colour, maybe it won't be the sparkling white of the paper, but it'll be a lot closer. Hi, this is Future Liz. One thing I totally forgot to talk about was hue. What does it mean if you see hue on um, a tube? And what it means is either the pigment is no longer available, so the chemists have come up with a mix of pigments that looks the same, or perhaps if it's a student range, the pigment is too expensive to include. So again, they mix other pigments up to try and make it look good. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found it useful. Please hit subscribe if you did.